بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین والصلاۃ والسلام علیہ رسول کریم پارٹ تھری دا سیکنڈ وے آف ہیلینزم چیپٹر الیون دا فلاورنگ آف فلاسفی پیج نمبر سیونٹی ابن سینا فلاسفی مسٹ ہیو بین کلٹیویٹڈ ایٹ مینی سینٹرز ان دا اسلامک ورلڈ بائی چانس وی ہیئر آف مین ورسٹ اینڈ فلاسفیکل سائنسز ایٹ اے اسمال ٹاؤن نیئر دا ساؤتھ کوسٹ آف کیسپین سی ایٹ لیسٹ اٹ واز اے مین from this town who gave the first instruction in philosophy to a boy who later became in the opinion of many the greatest of all the philosopher right philosoph philosophers writing in arabic this was ibn sina or abu ali bin sina he was mainly of persian stock it would seem but may have had turkish blood he grew up in Bukhara and began his education by memorizing the Quran and Arabic poetry before passing on to jurisprudence. He was possibly only about 14 when the visiting scholar mentioned above introduced him to Aristotelian logic and found to his surprise that the boy soon had a better grasp of the subject than his teacher. With an instatable thirst for knowledge, Ivan Sina then devoured all the scientific and philosophical books he could get hold of he studied medicine apparently by himself and obtained so through a theoretical grasp that practicing physician came to read medical book and un- medical books under his guidance according to the autobiographical fragment from which we derive this information all this happened before he was 17 and he also tested out and increased his medical knowledge by treating patients in this course of omnivorous study the one subject which gave him trouble was metaphysics he says he had read over aristotle's metaphysica 40 times and had the text by heart yet he was baffled by it until he chanced to come on a little book by al farabi which brought him full illumination The anecdotes indicate that it was the direct influence of the older Islamic philosopher which led him to adopt so similar a general position in philosophy. For the next year or so, he had access to a remarkable library of Greek works belonging to the Sultan of Bukhara and made the fullest use of this time. Before he was 18, he reckoned he had he simulated all of the all the scientific and philosophical knowledge available so that so that after so that thereafter he added nothing to his store of information though his understanding of it deepened perhaps it was well that he had read so widely while he had the opportunity uh, for about 998 his circumstances changed on his father's death he had to seek a civil service oper- appointment to make a living the political condition of the region also altered for the worse and the rise and fall of small dynasties and administration meant that he had constantly to move from place to place from about 1015 to 1022 he was in uh, hamadhan and for the part of this time occupied the difficult and dangerous post of wazir or chief minister to the local buwaihid prince from about 1023 until his death uh, when until his death he was in isfahan isfahan under the patronage of local prince in considering ivan sina as a philosopher it must also be remembered that his canon of medicine holds an outstanding place in med- medical science and that his writings on other sciences were also influential his philosophy is contained chiefly in two books the shifa and the najat of which the first is in great co- compendium including sciences as well as philosophy while the second is an abridged version of the philosophical parts of the longer work the second is divided into three parts one dealing with logic one with uh, natural philosophy 
really questions about such matter as substance accident and the nature of human soul and one about theology including cosmology the general opinion is neoplatonic god is one and then necessarily existent wajid al wujud from whom everything emanates beneath him are the pure intelligences and the spheres the conception of human soul is essentially aristotelian but modified apparently in accordance with discussion and interpretations of later greek platonizing philosophers like most of the other islamic philosophers he explained the possibility of prophethood but where al farabi had connected prophethood with the highest form of imagination i have seen a link it with the highest part of soul the intellect it is also worth noting that in contrast to al farabi there is no trace of shiism in ibn sina there is no attempt to show that the actual ruler receives a more than ordinary portion of divine wisdom he is mainly concerned to explain how a prophet how through a prophet a state based on divine wisdom may be established in the first place this uh, change of emphasis on apparent uh, avoidance of shiism is perhaps chiefly due to the fact that by this time fatimid propaganda was active in the east of the islamic world i mean sina himself remembered how when he was a boy propagandist had arrived in bukhara and how he had overheard heated discussion about the teaching they gave in his maturity uh, even imamite uh, shiite ruler must have realized that this propaganda was a threat to their power and anything resembling it would therefore be suspect another relevant point is that ibn sina had as much political power as he wanted and so does not seem to have felt in any way the rivalry of sunnite ulama thus there was nothing to lead him to exaggerate the importance of philosophy in this respect he was in similar position to mutazilite during the period of their political ascendancy and like them he took for granted that his philosophical interpretation of islam was the true one an identification of their own interpretation with true islam was likewise common among mystics and ibn sina had also a mystical side the final question concerning ibn sina are about the relation of his philosophy to his mysticism and to his religious outlook generally to begin with the latter he was brought up as a good muslim he memorized the quran and he studied the sharia or the revealed law in his autobiographical fragment he tells us that he went to mosque and prayed about his intellectual problems and he says nothing about any conscious change in his view he probably felt that greek scientific and philosophical learning belonged to a different sphere from islamic doctrine and that there was no fundamental opposition between them in his philosophy he seemed to have in his philosophy he seemed to have thought of himself as supporting and elucidating what he considered to be the central doctrine of islam the existence of god who is the source of all being and the possibility of men becoming prophet prophets and receiving revelations ibn sina's conception of prophethood and his conception of the soul's journey to god are closely linked both with one another and with his philosophy 19th century um, european scholar thought that his mysticism was extraneous to his philosophy but further acquaint, uh, acquaintances uh, with his writings make it clear that this is not so his mysticism and his philosophy constitute a single integrated system the extent of his mystical writing show that the mystical life meant meant much to him it was presumably the source of his intellectual energy because of this personal religious attitude ivan sina has been held by one of the leading modern scholar to come closer to the spirit of plato than other philosophers whose style is more platonic and less aristotelian he understood something which is the very essence of plato's thought 
and it may be that for this reason he appealed to religious Muslims as Plato himself has conveyed religious truth to people open to religion at all times.